we are asked to find a real positive value for x that satisfies the equation x to the power of x equals 81. The constraint that x is positive is crucial for ensuring the function is well-defined. This equation's simple appearance belies a more complex solution. To build a strategy, we will first analyze a related problem with a more direct solution. Consider the equation. The variable x raised to the power of x equals 256. The main strategy here is to rewrite the number on the right-hand side so that its base and its exponent are the exact same number. The number 256 can be expressed as 4 raised to the fourth power. In this form, the base and the exponent are identical. Substituting this expression back into the equation yields x to the x equals 4 to the 4. By comparing the structure of both sides of the equation, it follows that x must be equal to 4. This pattern matching is valid because the function f of x equals x to the x is strictly increasing for values of x greater than 1 over e. This property guarantees that the solution is unique in this domain. We can confirm this by analyzing the derivative. The derivative of x to the x is x to the x times the quantity natural log of x plus 1. For any x greater than 1 over e, this derivative is positive. This proves the function is strictly increasing in that domain, which guarantees our solution is unique. We will now apply this pattern matching strategy to the original problem. The goal is to express 81 in the form a to the power of a for some number a. Let's examine the possible base exponent decompositions of 81. First, 81 can be expressed as 9 squared. This substitution gives x to the x equals 9 squared. In this form, the base is 9 and the exponent is 2. Since they do not match, this representation does not lead to a solution. Alternatively, 81 can be written as 3 to the 4th power. This gives the equation x to the x equals 3 to the 4th power. Here, the base is 3 and the exponent is 4. They are not equal. This suggests that no integer a exists such that a to the a equals 81. Since pattern matching with integers failed, we must investigate the nature of the solution more closely. We know that 3 to the power of 3 is 27, and 4 to the power of 4 is 256. Our target value of 81 lies between 27 and 256. This implies that 3 to the 3 is less than x to the x, which is less than 4 to the 4. Because the function f of x equals x to the x is strictly increasing on this interval, it follows that the solution for x must lie between 3 and 4. This confirms that the solution cannot be an integer. Our search must extend to non-integer real numbers. To confirm the existence and uniqueness of this solution, we can visualize the problem graphically. Here we plot two functions, u equals x to the power of x, and the horizontal line e equals 81. The x coordinate of their intersection point represents the solution to our equation. The graphs intersect at exactly one point. As predicted by our analysis, the x value of this intersection lies between 3 and 4. This confirms a single real solution exists. The function's behavior, approaching 1 as x, approaches 0, reaching a minimum at 1 over e, and then strictly increasing, explains why a single positive solution exists for a target value of 81. A common question is why not simply use a calculator to find the answer? A calculator provides a numerical approximation, but it cannot yield the exact analytical form of the solution or explain the underlying mathematical structure. Our objective is to understand the nature of the solution, not merely to compute it. Having established that the solution is a non-integer, we now investigate whether it can be expressed using standard algebraic functions. To handle the variable in the exponent, we can use logarithms. The key property of the logarithm is that it allows us to move a variable from an exponent. 
the power rule, is the appropriate tool for this manipulation. We apply the natural logarithm to both sides of the equation. Applying the power rule for logarithms, we move the exponent x to the front, resulting in x times the natural log of x equals the natural log of 81. At this stage, elementary algebra is insufficient to isolate x. This is a transcendental equation because the variable x appears both as a linear term and within a logarithmic term. It cannot be solved for x using standard algebraic operations. To solve this, we need to introduce a special tool. This is necessary because standard algebra has reached its limit. The tool is called the Lambert W function. The Lambert W function is defined as the inverse of a simpler function. f of w equals w times e to the w. Notice this function has the same structural problem as our equation. The variable w appears both as a base and inside an exponent. You cannot use elementary algebra to solve y equals w times e to the w for a w. So, mathematicians gave a name to this inverse. The Lambert w function, written as w, simply undoes the operation of multiplying a value by e to that same value. Now, let's connect this back to our original problem. We were stuck at this equation. x times the natural log of x equals the natural log of 81. Our goal is to manipulate the left side to look like u times e to the u, so we can apply the Lambert W function. The relationship between x and the natural log of x is the key. The substitution x equals e to the u is designed specifically to create this structure. The key is to set x equal to e to the u. This also means that u equals the natural log of x. Substituting this into our equation, x becomes e to the u, and the natural log of x becomes the natural log of e to the u. Since the natural log and the exponential are inverse functions, the natural log of e to the u simplifies to just u. Rearranging the terms, we have now arrived at the canonical form. The equation is perfectly structured to be solved by the Lambert W function. By definition, the solution for u is the principal branch of the Lambert W function, evaluated at the natural log of 81. This gives us the solution for u, but our original problem asked for x. Therefore, we must now reverse our substitution. Recalling our substitution where x equals e to the u, we can substitute our expression for u back in. This gives us the exact analytical solution for x. Using a known property of the Lambert W function, this exact solution can also be written as the natural log of 81 divided by w sub 0 of the natural log of 81. This form is often useful in other contexts. We have found the exact analytical answer. But what is its actual value? Let's use this formula to compute an approximation and verify our result. To evaluate this, a computer or calculator must first find the value of the Lambert W function. You might wonder, how is this value actually calculated? There is no simple formula. Instead, computers use what are called iterative methods. These methods start with a guess and then systematically improve it until the result is highly accurate. For our problem, this gives w sub 0 of the natural log of 81 a value of approximately 1.25643. Now, we can complete the calculation. Taking the number e and raising it to this power gives us our final approximate value for x, approximately 3.50433. And notice, this value is between 3 and 4, exactly as we predicted. And for the final check, if we raise this number to its own power, the result is indeed 81. Our analytical solution is correct. For completeness, it is worth noting that infinitely many complex solutions exist. These correspond to the other branches of the Lambert W function, denoted W sub K for any integer K. Let us summarize the key findings. We began with the equation X to the X equals 81 
which initially appears to have a simple structure. Analysis revealed that the solution must lie between 3 and 4, proving it is not an integer. The properties of the function f of x equals x to the x, including its global minimum at x equals 1 over e, determine the number of real solutions. We found that an exact solution requires the Lambert W function. This allowed us to express x analytically as e raised to the power of w of the natural log of 81 and to find a precise numerical value of approximately 3.5043. This problem serves as an excellent case study on the limits of elementary functions. It demonstrates the necessity of special functions like the Lambert W for solving certain classes of equations and highlights the interplay between analytical solutions and numerical methods. The analysis reveals a rich mathematical structure underlying a seemingly simple equation.